Okay, we're going to talk about autonomic dysreflexia, also called autonomic hyperreflexia. This is a medical emergency that afflicts spinal cord injury patients when the injury falls above the level of T7. In the event of a spinal cord injury, the autonomic nervous system continues to function but is unable to communicate with your brain due to an interruption at the level of the injury. body sends a message of pain or discomfort to your spinal cord. Your spinal cord tries to send these messages to your brain, but because of your injury, the message is blocked, which is probably why you cannot feel the pain in the first place. So what happens is the autonomic nervous system is sensing this and sends the sympathetic nervous system signals and the vessels vasoconstrict below the level of the, re of the lesion. This process squeezes extra blood into the blood vessels in the rest of your body. The extra blood, in conjunction with the tightly squeezed blood vessels, makes your blood pressure go up quickly. So as the vessels are continuing to constrict to try to send signals to the brain, what happens is before it even gets to the brain, these baroreceptors now in the carotids and the aortic arch, know that it's supposed to relax the vessels, but it can't get the signal down to lower the blood pressure in the lower extremities because the cord is severed. So what you get is vasodilation above the level of the injury and vasoconstriction causing very dangerous hypertensive blood pressures below the level of the injury and the vagus nerve causes um, a bradycardia. So you get severe hypertension and bradycardia. Autonomic dysreflexia can be very dangerous. It can cause a rapid increase in your blood pressure. High blood pressure is a serious medical situation. It could lead to stroke, seizure, and even death. So let's look at other assessments. The patient is going to start to complain of a severe pounding headache from all that blood going into the head. Facial flushing along with this headache because the vessels are vasodilated, remember, above the level of the injury. Diaphoresis, sympathetic nervous system response. first thing to do is raise the head of the bed. This way at least that pressure comes down from the head. The next thing you do is find the pain stimulus. That's the only thing that's going to reverse this. The most common problem or cause of autonomic dysreflexia, I've read like 9 out of 10 cases, it's due to a distended bladder. So either the patient can't empty it or their foley is kinked. So those are two really important assessments to make upon quick view of your patient. Or the other big cause is an impacted bowel or a full bowel. There could be any number of reasons though when you've already ruled out these two big reasons. So the patient could have a pressure ulcer, their belt could be too tight, their shoelace could be too tight, their sheet could be wrinkled underneath them. I remember I used to have a student come in who got their first job on a spinal cord injury unit and she said that her and her colleagues would walk around and remove those little foley clips from the bed because that was a big cause of autonomic dysreflexia on her unit. So she hated those little foley clips. Think of it this way. If there is any stimulation below your level of injury that would have been painful or unpleasant before your injury it could now cause an episode of AD.